my name is Batist and I'm a comparative developer at IBM in Canada. And today with Joao, who is a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Alberta in Canada, we will talk about the new matrix multiplication instructions that are available on Core PC. So um, these new instructions were added with version 3.1 of the Core PC ISA that is publicly available for a few months now. And the motivation behind these new instructions was the increasing need for fast numerical linear algebra operations, in, in particular on, on small vectors and small matrices. Um, so of course, this increasing need is mainly caused by the emerging field of AI, in particular machine learning and deep learning that are extensively using these operations. And in addition to these operations, um, there is also an increase in the use of some types that were not necessarily common in other contexts, such as uh, FP16 in 16, or even uh, new types such as before 16. So the goal of these new instructions is to speed up important computational kernels uh, that are using these types of operations, such as matrix multiplication, convolution, or discrete Fourier transform. So for these new instructions, we have eight new 512-bit uh, registers available that are called the accumulators. And as you can see in the figure here, each, ac each accumulator is actually associated with, with four of the existing VSR registers that are the Power PC 128-bit vector registers. So something that is really important with these registers is that they have two uh, separate states. So the first state is prime. So when an accumulator is prime, it means that it contains defined data and means that it's associated VSR registers contains, um, they contain and define data. So while, while the accumulator is prime, it's associated VSR registers cannot be used uh, at all. And of course, the second state is unprime. So when an accumulator is unprime, it doesn't contain uh, it doesn't contain defined data, and this cannot be used with MMA instructions. But of course, its associated VSR registers are available and can be used to store any other data. So there are three kinds of instructions for MMA. Um, the first kind is the instructions to move data from and to the accumulators. <clears throat> so we have the XXMTACC instruction. This instruction takes an accumulator operand and copies data to it from, from its four uh, associated VSR registers. So this instruction actually primes uh, the accumulator. Um, there is also the XXM FACC instruction that is unpriming the accumulator. So uh, it is copy copying data uh, from the accumulator back to its four associated VSR registers. And finally, there is the XXZ ACCZ instruction that is zero initializing uh, the given ac accumulator. So for, for this instruction, there is no data transfer, but uh, the accumulator operand is still primed by the operation. Then uh, the second kind of instructions are integer rank K update instructions. So I won't give too much details on these instructions. So I take uh, only one of them as an example, the instruction XVI 16 GR2. Um, so as you can see on the left side here, this instruction computes the product of two four by two matrices of in 16 and puts the, result, the resulting four by four matrix uh, of int 32 into the given accumulator. Um, we see on the right side that uh, there are variants of this instruction with different prefixes and suffixes that can actually be combined. So for example, the same instruction with the PM prefix allows using main masking. So it allows keeping columns and rows uh, for the multiplication. Uh, the S suffix allows using satura saturating arithmetic. And finally, instruction with the PP suffix accumulate the result in the given accumulator instead of just over, overriding it. So I took these instructions uh, as an example, but the other instructions are really similar, but they just operate on different types. So in addition to, to, to in 16, there are instructions for sign and unsign int 8 and int 4. And finally, we have the third kind of instruction that, that are uh, floating point rank K update instruction and are actually really similar to, to the previous instructions. So here, for example, the XVF16GR2 instruction computes the product of two four by two FP16 matrices and stores the results in an accumulator representing a four by four matrix of uh, FP32. So you can see that for these uh, instructions, uh, we also have the PM prefix for lane masking and we also have suffixes to accumulate the results of the computations. And once again, here we have similar instructions for different types. So we have instruction for B416, FP16, FP32, and FP64. So as I explained before, these instructions are designed to speed up computational kernels. So they are actually used in, in performance sensitive contexts. And even, even if generating specialized code from high-level language constructs currently is an active area of research, 
um, that doesn't give optimal performance yet. And uh, for this reason, most MMA code is currently manually written and typically with inline assembly because the users uh, need full control over the generated instructions for MMA. Um, but of course, uh, manually reading, man manually writing uh, the code prevents from using abstractions, and we also do not uh, benefit from the low-level optimizations that the compiler may may offer. So, so to solve these issues, we've designed an API that is based on compiler built-ins, and we think that this API is actually a good compromise in abstractions because, of course, we still have no high-level constructs with the with this API, but we we can add some abstractions and easily extend the semantics of the abstractions. And, and yeah, we also benefit from the low-level optimization from, from the compiler. So um, we've co-designed this API with the GCC for RPC team. Uh, it's, it is already available in GCC and we are currently working on implementing it in Clang. And of course the API will be compatible between uh, GCC and Clang. And finally, I just wanted to mention that we are also exploring lowering the new target independent of LVM matrix operations to MMA and for RPC using these uh, instructions. Okay, so I think the best way to present the API is to actually show an example of it. So um, for the API, we added two target dependent types to Clang, uh, vector quad and vector per. So vector quad is uh, basically just a 32 byte type that is directly mapped to the accumulators. And vector per is a type that is mapped to two consecutive VSR registers. So this vector quad type, is, sorry, this vector per type is needed by some of the instructions because they uh, actually take two consecutive VSR registers as operand um, that are actually identified only by the first of the pair. So uh, yeah, for this example here, we uh, define and use uh, eight accumulators. Uh, then uh, we added uh, a built-in for each MMA instruction. So these built-ins are basically just one-to-one -one mapping. So a call to, to, to a built-in only generates the corresponding MMA instruction. Um, we also added some built-ins that allow us to extend the semantics of the MMA instruction. So uh, first we've added a built-in that is, that is extending the prime instruction. So this built-in allows um, uh, to build and prime an accumulator from uh, four vectors. So actually from four arbitrary VSR registers. Um, we, we've also added a similar built-ins to extend the prime instruction by allowing disassembling an accumulator back to four vectors um, and of course, we've also added similar built-ins to assemble and disassemble vector pairs. Uh, so something interesting that, we, that you may notice here is that uh, thanks to these built-ins that are extending the semantics, uh, there is actually no need to explicitly generate the prime, the prime and non-prime instructions. They, they are um, automatically generated by the compiler when we initialize an accumulator. So this is completely transparent for the users. Um, and finally, something that um, we cannot directly see uh, in this example is that we also added semantic checks to force the correct use of accumulators. So basically, we only allow using vector quad types um, uh, as local variables for kernels. And the reason we want to force that is uh, because if this type is used elsewhere, it is actually really easy to write code that will be uh, completely inefficient and even slower than just not using MMA at all. So I will now talk about the implementation of this API in Clang and LLVM. So the Clang part uh, wasn't really difficult to implement. Uh, we just defined the two target dependent types in the separate files for, for, for PowerPC, uh, because this would allow us to easily add new PowerPC specific types if uh, we need to in the future. Um, we, we, we've then defined the built-ins with the other PowerPC built-ins. So, uh, However, because uh, they use these new types and we don't want the implementation to be too pervasive, we, we use custom page checking for these built-ins. And in addition to the types, we also check the constant ranges for the built-ins that are using lane masking. And finally, for the semantic checks, we've added a, a PowerPC function that is doing the check. And we just call this function from various places in SEMA to ensure that the vector quad type is only declared as a local variable. So we had a little bit more trouble to implement the instructions in LLVM. So um, we used the V256I1 and V512I1 uh, for the, the, the new types in the PowerPC backend. Um, these types were not used before in PowerPC, so they are now completely dedicated to MMA. Um, then uh, we've added uh, three register classes. So one is used for pairs and two uh, for the accumulators. So the ACK and the UAC classes. 
And using two register classes for the accumulators uh, allows to differentiate between primed and unprimed accumulators. And this is actually really important because if we use the single register class, we will have situation in which the compiler generates invalid copies between accumulators. So for example, it, it, it will generate a copy from a primed accumulator to an unprimed accumulator. And in this uh, situation, it will just copy the four best VSR registers, which is uh, not valid because the source of the copy will need to be unprimed before the copy and prime it again after the copy. So um, with these two uh, classes for accumulators, we legalize the V512 by one uh, type with the unprime register class, so the UAC class. So we are sure that an accumulator, an accumulator is always initially in the unprime state. Then uh, the only way to transform a register from the UAC class to a register uh, from the AC class is by using the assemble intrinsic because it is the intrinsic that is uh, actually priming uh, the accumulator. And finally, the, op the only operation, uh, operations that are using registers from the ACK class in the Power PC backend are the intrinsic calls to the MMA instructions. So this approach solves our issue with invalid copies, but actually causes another issue. Uh, the issue is that every time the compiler needs to allocate a register when a V512 I1 uh, is used, it allocates a register from the UAC class, and that may cause the generation of additional copies between accumulators, uh, which are really expensive because, I, I, as I explained before, uh, for copies of accumulators, we always need to generate prime and unprime instructions. So, um, for example, for, for fee nodes, we often ended up in this kind of situation here. So, here in block three, we have an accumulator in temporary seven, and in block one, we have a prime accumulator in temporary 10. And in block two, we just want a phenol that is taking these two prime accumulator as operand. But because the compiler, the compiler allocates the result of the phenol to an unprimed accumulator, it generates copy in, in block three and one to unprime the two accumulators be, before the phenol. And then it generates a copy in block two to prime the, the accumulators uh, that is the result of the phenol. So of course, we don't want these additional copies and we need uh, to do additional work to remove them. So in the case, in the specific case of the phenol here, we use, uh, we use the peephole to, to remove these copies. And um, yeah, so that's it for the instructions for the API and the implementation. And I'm now passing it over to Joel. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is João, and in this part of the video, I'm going to present our approach for leveraging target-specific instructions via replacement of native code idioms. The MMA instructions presented by BAP just in the beginning of the video are part of a current trend on domain-specific consolidation, where hardware vendors either introduce novel instructions, such as the MMA instructions, or novel accelerators, such as the Tensor Processing Unit from Google and Huawei. The advantage of such domain-specific acceleration is that they are better fit to the problems in the domain, and they usually provide a better power and performance trade-off than general purpose hardware. However, the disadvantage of domain-specific acceleration is that they require explicit use of novel instructions or compiler support in order for the programs to take full advantage of the accelerator. Domain-specific Acceleration is usually enabled by compiler-based optimizations or hand-optimized high-performance libraries. Compilers are very good at identifying redundant computations, eliminating that code, and selecting instructions for common operations. However, most compilers are oblivious to operation-specific opportunities. High-performance libraries, on the other hand, employ operation-specific optimizations and use close-to-optimal instruction scheduling. However, high-performance libraries do require changes to the application's code and are not easily portable. Our proposed solution is called Gemfarer, replacing native code idioms with high-performance library calls. Gemfarer is a LLVM opt pass that uses and extends LLVM pattern match to identify many variants of the general matrix-matrix multiply pattern. It detects matrix access order by combining pattern matching and loop information pass. Gemfarer is fully integrated with LLVM, so it doesn't require external tools or languages. It's more robust than state-of-the-art approaches and exhibits lower compilation overhead than poly and IDL.
the solution is being submitted to the ACM's Transactional or Architecture and Compiler Optimization Journal. This diagram shows how the Gemfire implementation works. First, the source code of the application needs to be compiled down to LVMIR. Then, the opt2 can be used to run the Gemfire pass to replace the matched idioms with either a call to the C++ interface or a call to our custom Eigen runtime. Because Gemfire is an LVMIR pass, it can work with any source code language as long as they have an LVMIR front end. Because Gemfire replaces the matched idioms with a call to the C++, it's possible to use any implementation of the C++ interface. For instance, the OpenBLAS library could be used or the MKL implementation from Intel could be also be used. Another alternative is to use the SSL library from IBM. Recently, a set of matrix intrinsics were added to the LVM IR, and we plan to support them as a replacement option for Gemfarer. By leveraging the LVM matrix intrinsics, we freeze the user from having to use either the C++ interface implementation or the Eigen runtime, thus using LVM matrix intrinsics enables users to use Gemfarer even on platforms where there is no implementation of the C++ or Eigen. Gemfarer can be directly enabled from the front, front end of the compiler. And if matrix intrinsics is passed as Gemfarer replacement mode, then LVM matrix intrinsics are generated. When LVM matrix intrinsics are used, Gemfarer co-generates blocked loops for improved cache access locality. After the input matrices are packed, they can be loaded using the matrix load operations according to the matched column or row major access order. Then each loaded block of the input matrices are multiplied using the matrix multiply intrinsic. Gemfarer employs packing operations to increase the locality in cache access and to decrease the amount of page faults. Then the LVM matrix multiply intrinsic can be lowered to any target specific instructions and thus benefit from any domain specific acceleration instructions available in the target machine. For example, LVM matrix multiply intrinsics could be lowered to MMA built-ins added to LVM. In fact, this is work in progress in our research group. The graph in this slide shows the performance improvement of using MMA instructions to compute the general matrix matrix multiply operation in Eigen. In the y-axis, we see the speed up of computing jam with MMA against the baseline implementation of Eigen that uses PowerPC vector instructions known as VSX. For each matrix size in the x-axis, we show the performance of using MMA instructions to compute GEM using four different microkernels. From a microkernel of eight by four elements that uses only two MMA accumulators to a kernel of 16 by eight elements that uses all eight available accumulators in the MMA unit. As the results show, when only two accumulators are used, the performance improvement with MMA is only about 20 to 30 percent, as shown by the blue bars. However, when all eight accumulators are used, the performance can be over two times speed up, as shown in the yellow bar. The performance can be improved even further if prefetching instructions are used, as shown by the green bar, getting to a performance up to 2.4 times compared to the baseline implementation of Eigen that only uses VSX instructions. For our next steps, we need to complete the tile loops implementation to incorporate the target transform info pass into Gemfarer so we can use the target specific information for blocking the matrices. We also need to finish the lowering of the LVM matrix intrinsics to MMA. We also want to propose novel LVM matrix intrinsics and we think as a good starting point is to implement other dense operations available in the C++ interface. Thank you for watching and we look forward to answering questions at the conference in October. Thank you.
Um, I am here with Baptiste and Zhao, and they're here to answer your questions. So again, a reminder, if you have any questions from the talk, please add them into the session Q&A section in Whova, and I'll be reading them out and giving uh, Baptiste and Zhao uh, an opportunity to answer them. Uh, but before we start, Baptiste has uh, just a quick update that he'd like to give um, about the talk. Yes, hello everyone. I just wanted to add some information. So for people interested in trying these uh, new instructions, we have released uh, an IBM Power 10 functional simulator that can be used to actually load, boot, and run a little Indian uh, Linux environment. So uh, we have packages available for Ubuntu and, and Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux on x86. And uh, the plan is that we will send a link to the web page with the instructions and uh, the download links in the LLVM mailing list after the meeting. Okay, so your first question uh, is from Dan, and it's, will the slides be available? Some of the examples are hard to read at 720p. So yeah, I, I think the, the, the conference organizers are collecting the slides after the, after the meeting, and I guess they will post them on, on the website, so you'll have access to the, to the slide. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question from Michael. Uh, considering that only few source files contain a manually written gem kernel, do you think gemfarer should be added to the O3 default pass pipeline? And I'm going to give this one to Zhao to, to answer. Yeah, I don't think it should be enabled by default, not because there's uh, only a few or a couple examples where we can actually find manually written uh, gems. Although Gemfire can match not only manually written gems, but pre-optimized pre versions as well. But I don't think it's a good idea to have it enabled because let's say you are benchmarking gem and then you have a naive implementation that you want to contrast yours against and suddenly your baseline becomes very fast and that's not, not a good idea. So I think it should be enabled uh, through a specific flag, but we can do enable it through the opt to, uh, uh, pipeline as well, or can be also enabled on all three uh, uh, optimization level, but I don't think it should be enabled by default. The user should uh, specify it explicitly, otherwise it's going to be very confusing to uh, page, especially when you're benchmarking code. Okay, thank you, Zhao. Uh, the next question from Aditya, which I think is also going to go to Zhao, is can Poly help with generating efficient tiling? That's a very good question. And one of the uh, uh, cases we are testing now is how to optimize the generated loops we have uh, co-generated so far. We are employing a, a tiling strategy for the outermost loops to improve the cache access locality. So far, we are only relying on standard uh, LVM passes to optimize those loops and also to optimize the packing and uh, blocking loops in the in the gem pattern. But we could also as well try to run some auto passes to see if they can actually improve the performance. One issue with poly is that we during our experiments we found that some cases where poly do does recognize gem as a, a idiom, it's not actually producing correct code, it's running and producing incorrect results. But we could also try to see if Poly can do a better job than this standard passes on LVM. Okay, thank you. Um, so next question from Ashwin, and I think we'll give this one to Baptiste. Are these MMA instructions available for Power 9, or is this, or is this just for Power 10 and later? So the instructions were, were added with Power 10, and, and they, they will not be available for, for Power 9. It's only over 10 and later. Okay, thank you. And the next uh, question, also from Ashwin, and also going to go to Baptiste. Uh, are all the int and float MMA instructions multiplying 4 by 2 inputs to produce a 4 by 4 matrix? Or are there different sizes available for input and output matrices? So uh, the, the the, the, the matrices size that, that I presented during the during the presentation are the only one that are supported for the instructions for now. Okay. Uh, sorry, the screen. Okay, next question, and I think this one will go to Zhao, is 
how does your compiled matrix multiplication compare to hand coded in terms of speed? We have uh, tests that we, uh, the Belize library provides a very nice tutorial on how to optimize gem for better uh, cache access locality and reducing page faults. And we follow the, the, those tutorial steps and we can speed up for the last step of the tutorial before actually introducing uh, assembly code and target specific code. We can get up to hundreds or thousands of times speed up over the code that is already optimized by by, by hand. So we, and we also match those cases, even though the code is quite complicated and complex because there's already packing instruction uh, steps and more loops than just three nested loops in the in the code. We can also match and replace and give a, a very interesting speed up because whenever we match, we can use uh, the fastest implementation of jump in that uh, target specific machine. For instance, we can replace with a call to Open Blast, or if we're running on IBM machine, we can replace with a call to ESSL, and that's gonna give like a uh, close to optimal performance on the target machine. Okay, thank you. And I don't see any more questions at this point, so I guess I'll give people a couple more uh, seconds to ask any other questions that they might have. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Baptiste and John, for the talk. And thank you all for attending. And I think we will wrap it up here. Thank you.